By the end of this video, you will have an understanding on how to create a simple system to display a scoreboard in your games. For the best tips and tricks on game programming and game development, subscribe to my channel, click the bell icon to be notified when I post a video every Monday. My name is George Wolfers and I am a professional game developer. Let me guide you on your game development journey. Step number one, the scoreboard item class. Okay, so we're gonna go into the scripts folder and right click on it, go to create, go to C-sharp script and we are gonna name this scoreboard item. Right, let's open it. And this one is not going to be a mono behavior. The reason is uh, we just want to store things inside of it. So we are, what are we going to be storing here? We're going to be storing uh, the player name. We're going to be storing the score that they currently have and how many levels they have completed. And we're also going to have a function that fills it up. And we just have to pass in the match information that they were using when they were playing. Step number two, the scoreboard class. All right, the next class that we're going to be creating is going to be the scoreboard manager. This class is going to be a mono singleton. This is because we want this class, we only want one instance of this class and we don't want to have multiple instances and we want to be able to call it from anywhere. Um, this class is not gonna be, uh, it's not gonna stay alive for the entirety of the application. We just need it when we are in the main menu. So, um, what are we gonna need here? We're gonna need a list that keeps track of all of the scoreboard items. And we also need a, we need a private for internal use to be able to modify it. And then we need a public, only a getter. This is a, per, a property. And we just need this property to be able to access this outside of this class, um, but we don't want to modify it. That's why we only have one, um, a get member, I guess. Um, as always, we want to initialize this class. And what we're going to be doing inside of the initialize class, uh, once we have that function, is we're going to be um, loading any data. So then what we need to do, um, we'll also do that. Um, so we need a function that adds a new entry into the list. Um, so what happens here is we're gonna pass in, uh, whenever we come back from a match, we're gonna be passing in the match info that we currently have. And we're gonna be first checking to see um, if we find it via the player name. And if we do find it, uh, we're just gonna break out of this and we're not gonna do anything because the only thing that this function needs to do is to add a new item. Um, but if we don't find it, if we go through the whole list and we don't find a, a one that we want to add, we are going to create the, um, the item, the scoreboard item. We're gonna set the data based on our info that we passed in, the match info, and then we're gonna add this into the uh, scoreboard list okay and eventually 
we will be uh, saving this data into the into the hard drive of your computer so it can persist but more on that later the next thing we would like to do is to have a function that removes an entry uh, from the list and we're only going to be caring about the player name that's the only thing that we need to pass in to find something right um, so it's going to be pretty much the same thing as we did here except when we find it we just care about the index and then we want to remove it now it is very important that when you're looping through something you don't want to alter the list if you alter the list while you're looping through it it's gonna cause an error um, I forget what error it's called I don't remember but if you find an error um, with the with with looping through this thing it's probably because you're adding or removing um, items of that list in that list but anyway once we find um, the index that means that it's not a negative one we are going to remove whatever index was found okay and then we're gonna have another function that just in case uh, this will get a an, a score item from the list uh, again through the uh, based on the player name and it's pretty much gonna work the same way as this one except now we're just um, once we find it we get that item and then we return it and we break out of there because we there will not be any duplicates um, so yeah so that's pretty simple so that's all of the functionality that you need in order for you to have a scoreboard that keeps track of of your entries one thing to note that we will need um, is we need to be able to tell it to sort um, the items once we add them to the list so that we can have the first item uh, be the one with the uh, highest score and this is how you would do that and that's pretty much it comment down below and let me know what you guys have learned so far step number three saving and loading data we are going to need a function that allows us to save data. Um, so pretty much what we want to do is we want to create a string that contains the full path of uh, where we want to store this, um, this data. And uh, for here, we are going to be calling it scorelist.json. Okay. And then, um, so here we're telling it on zero we're gonna have this persistent data path um, that unity provides for us and we're gonna concatenate it with this which is going to be this uh, score list JSON and the reason why so when you're saving data for your games you always want to make sure that whatever data is gonna be crucial for your game to work it has to be, ideally, uh, you want to save it on a persistent path that is going to be consistent throughout your everywhere. Um, so by persistent, it means that you know it doesn't change. Um, so you, the persistent data path here is going to be in your app data local low and whatever your company name is. Uh, that's where your this is going to be saved. So we're going to have a file name, and we're going to open up a stream writer to save our data. This is just debug information so that we know that it's actually working. Um, and we're just debugging. Uh, we're just showing pretty much all the data that we're going to be saving. Um, we are using here JSON utility. 
uh, this is another U Unity uh, engine um, class that allows us to pretty much have a a class that we can serialize and turn it into text which that's what a JSON file is it's a text formatted text um, that allows you to it's kind of like an XML file if you've ever worked with one of those but a little bit easier to read in order for this to work I believe we need to Tell it that it's a serializable class, and we need to serialize each field here so that it can know um, what we want to save. So that is very important. Uh, so yeah, that's what's going to do is going to convert our class into a string that it's going to be associated with, with, with the variables. It's going to have the variable name on one side and then on the other side it's gonna have um, the actual data and we can actually see it when we once we start uh, testing this and then we just write it into the file and once we're done through uh, we just close the file make sure you always close your files and we just say that we ended on our debug log okay and we need to call this every time we add a new entry. Now, to load is gonna be similar. So we still have the same data path that we want. It's with the same uh, file name. And we first need to make sure that this file actually exists for us to be able to read from it. And this will turn true or false. This is part of the system IO um, namespace. And if it is, then we're just going to be creating the stream reader, not a writer, because we're reading files. Um, we don't really need this index, so let me just get rid of that. But um, we're just debugging again, debug logging. Um, and we're going to be looping through this uh, stream reader until we have, um, until this flag is set that tells us this is the end of the file. Uh, but as long as it's not the end of the file, we're just going to keep doing what we're doing. So we're going to read the line and we're, this is pretty much going to be the, the JSON data that we have. And we're going to de debug log it just so that we can visually see it once we load it um, to see like if there's anything any issues with loading um, this is a really good idea to do um, then we're gonna use the JSON utility we're gonna call this from JSON file we're gonna tell it what type of object we want to create we want it to create it's gonna be a scoreboard item and we're gonna pass in that JSON data and it's gonna automatically create that scoreboard item and it's going to apply the the values that we saved on the file and apply those into um, into that class that item and then we're just going to add those back into the list uh, this only needs to be done when you load the game okay only that's it well every time you go into the main menu because since this data is not going to be persistent because the only the, we only care about it in the main menu every time we go to play or whatever it's gonna pretty much erase all that so we want to reload it once we go back into the main menu uh, then we close it once we're out uh, and then we just print end to the console uh, so this one we are just going to call it right here and we can get rid of these things um, so once we initialize this class it's gonna load everything 
into our scoreboard list. Step number four, making the user interfaces. All right, so with all of this stuffs, um, let's create the user interface for our thing. Okay, so let's go into the main menu, uh, option screen panel. Uh, let's hide that because we don't need that. It's, oh, we need to modify the main, main screen. Uh, we need to add another button here called maybe like leader leaderboard button. Um, we're gonna call it leaderboard or something like that. And then we're going to get this guy and we're gonna have to resize these. So we're just gonna divide these by four and we're just gonna copy that and resize all of these to fit. Okay, so now we need to work on the actual leaderboard screen panel and let's hide the main menu and let's do this guy so this is going to be the scoreboard panel and we don't need any of these probably um, we are going to call this scoreboard item UI. And what we're not going to have any sliders, but we are going to have some labels. The first label is going to be the index. And the player name and the score and then the levels completed like that and let's just do index Player name, and we could probably do a 300 here. Score, and and also 300 here. We can grab. Well, actually, we can just remove that um, we'll eventually need to make this guy into a prefab but we don't need to do that yet we don't need to apply anything we just need a back button to be able to get out so let's go ahead and create the uh, scoreboard UI item script so score board item UI, let's call it. Let's reload everything and reopen it. I don't know why we have to do that. This one has to be a mono behavior. Uh, the reason is because it needs to actually, we need to actually have it as a component and, and it needs, so it works properly. Um, so these are going to be what we need. Uh, we need to import TM Pro. Uh, so we need the index label, player name label, score label, levels completed label, and we also need set data uh, function 
to pass in the index and the score item. Um, and we just pretty much set the text like that. And that one is completed. Now let's go into the main menu. All right, so let's go all the way on top here. Um, we are gonna need a couple of new things here. So the first thing is gonna be the cam a new canvas group for the new screen that we have. Uh, this is gonna be the leaderboard screen panel. Uh, we need a rect transform for the scoreboard panel. This is gonna be um, the parent of all of our score item UIs to display on the user interface. Uh, and we need a game object uh, scoreboard item prefab to be able to load those scoreboard item UI stuffs. Okay, let's go into the start menu. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to add a leaderboard screen panel and just shut it off at the start because we don't need it. The next thing we need to do is we need to load or add any new entries into the score uh, scoreboard manager. Um, we're gonna do that at the start of the main menu so that whenever we one open the um, the application it'll load it up or when we come back from a game it'll load it up as well so we need to make sure that the scoreboard manager exists the match info setup exists and we are gonna request the current info from the match info setup and if it's not empty if it's not null this means that we actually have something so we're going to add this new entry or try to add the new entry into the scoreboard manager. All right, the last thing we need to do is to populate the leaderboard panel there, which we don't have yet. Um, so Let's see. Let's go into the options clicked. Uh, we need to add the this there just to make sure that we turn it off once we hit the options. And same thing here. Um, once we hit the back button, we also just want to go back to the main menu and we need to make sure that that's off. And we want to also uh, create a on leaderboard clicked um, so that it turns on the leaderboard. And let's see, the next function we need is called on leaderboard back button clicked um, and actually we are going to also probably just to be safe we'll add that so we just want to go back to the main menu um, and everything else should shut off and let's see okay the last function that we need here is to populate the um, leaderboard panel and the way we do that is pretty simple um, so we want to keep track of what index we are doing since we're doing a for each loop um, we're gonna loop through the scoreboard list remember remember we can actually get that list but we cannot modify it. We get the item and we instantiate this uh, prefab. So I we should really um, check to make sure that we actually have the prefab. Uh, 
And actually, we if if we don't have the prefab, then we just don't do anything. Um, if so, if this is null, then we just return and nothing happens. Okay, so we instantiate the prefab, we uh, get the item UI, scoreboard item UI script, we set the data, we pass in the index, and we pass it the item uh, data. Uh, and we make sure that the scoreboard panel is actually uh, present. If it is, then we set that as a parent and we increment the index. And this should be called up here. Once we start the um, scoreboard, once the whole scoreboard is initialized and we have everything new that we want to pass into it, we just populate that leaderboard panel so that we can actually look at it. Now let's go into Unity and let's go here to the scoreboard item um, and we are going to so we pass that in and we fill it out properly index leader name score label levels completed oh. save that and we're gonna go here we're gonna go to res not resources uh prefabs and we're just gonna drag this into there we're gonna go into the background and we're gonna set a couple things. The first one is gonna be this guy, uh, which is the score scoreboard item prefab, which is all the way down there. Then we need the scoreboard panel right there. Leaderboard screen panel. And that's right there. And it's all set up step number five and final step testing and fixing bugs if any now what we want to do is play test all right so we are in the more the pong thing and we're actually loading something whoa actually we didn't set up something correctly um the buttons don't forget the buttons so leaderboard button is going to let's see it does play sound that's good and it's going to instead of start game we're gonna go on leaderboard clicked and then on back you're going to go to leaderboard back button clicked let's hit play and we shouldn't see anything in the console yet. <laughs> the reason I did was because I had a list already there, um, but I just deleted it so that it'll be the same as how you have it. So if we go into the leaderboards right now, we're just gonna see this, the header of it, okay? Um, so let's go into the, let's just do something with this guy. Do that. Go start, and let's play a little bit. Um, we'll, we'll we'll just lose, but um, okay. And we should add a something into it, and we should see that it saved it. So, it's saving that data. And now if we go into the leaderboard, it is right there. Now the formatting is not correct. Um, so what we should actually be doing is we should be resizing um, this box as it grows. But we can do that somewhere else. Anyway, we have our player name, we have the index, and we have a score, and we have the levels completed. So if we go back and... Um, 
we actually exit from it. Um, let's actually change our name. Where are we doing that? We're doing that in the main menu, I believe, when we hit start. Let's do that. Uh, let's change it to Tom. I don't know, something like that. So we go inside, we load the data, the data should already be there. We go back, we go here. Let's play it a little bit and get a different score. Um, different data sets so that you can see it playing in action. Uh, and to see actually if the other stuff works properly. Anyway, I think that will be enough data. We'll let it go. And let's clear that. You lost. We'll add that stuff there. And we'll go into the leaderboards. And we can see that Tom is there now. And we're actually here um, in index one. So if we go back and we exit and we go back in, uh, let's look at that and there it is. Now there's a lot of things that we need to do in order to make this better. Congratulations, now you know how to implement a simple scoreboard system for your games. If you would like to download the project, I have placed the link down below and follow along with us. Also, if you want to join a community of dedicated people just like you that are on the same journey. I have a Facebook page where I share information on game development and game programming to help you succeed. Check out these other videos on game development using Unity. If you like this video, hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe and share it with your friends. Thank you and have a great day.